Perfect Route Thursdays. My name is Shane, and today I want to talk to you about the Ford F-150 Lightning. Welcome to Tang. Technology, automotive, and gaming. Let's talk about the cool features it's got first. So, it's got a cool front that holds about 14 cubic feet or 400 liters if you're in the metric system. It's got a cool tailgate that's got a bunch of plugins, including a 240. You got a bunch of plugins in the front, a bunch of 110s, plus a USB C and a USB. Lots of power to plug things that you can plug in the whole world. You can charge your house for, it for up to three days, they say. Do you have a small house like mine and it's the winter time, so I'm not using the AC unit? I could charge that mother trucker for days and days, almost a week off the standard one because I only use, you know, 15 to 18 kilowatts. As well, if you're going off-road and stuff like that, it has thermal sensors in both the motors and the battery, which I think is cool because I like to know that stuff. I don't know why a lot of cars don't do that. So that is fantastic. Range. It's a decent amount of range. Uh, you got 98 kilowatts uh, base battery. It's 230 miles. That's, you know, 2.3 miles per kilowatt. That's pretty good. I do miles per kilowatt because the other way is just stupid. Who wants to do zero dot 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 dot? And then the 300 mile range with the 131 kilowatts, it's about 2.24. So it's pretty good too. On top of that, it has the same charging system as the Mustang Mach E. So according to what Mustang Mach E does, you're looking at about 130 kilowatts and then it'll taper down to 80%. So if you do off of that basis with your fast charging system, you're looking for the 98 kilowatt on somewhere between under an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, depending on how well the taper goes off and how well that charging is doing. But the 300 mile one, it might be less because people don't realize bigger batteries, you can maintain a higher wattage of going into the car. And when you have that higher wattage, you can actually charge the car faster. It's it just, you know, it's thermal efficiencies, thermal dynamics. I'm not a engineer, but you know, that's how it works. That's how battery works. Bigger batteries can charge faster than uh, little batteries because of the size. So you know, you're probably looking around an hour, an hour, 15 minutes for that too. Not so bad, uh, pretty fast charging. So that's not, that, that's nice. I mean, I don't, I don't wanna wait for everything to charge. Uh, it also has a lot of towing capacity. So the base model has 425 horsepower and 775 foot pounds, you dork. I like to dork. And it will tow 7,700 pounds of weight on a trailer and it can put in its bed about 2,000 pounds. Now the bigger battery has 565 horsepower and it'll tow about 10,000 pounds of trailer load, which is super nice. Not as good as like the V8 F-150, which you're going up to the 14,000 to 15,000 pounds, but still really good. I mean, if you need more than 7,000 pounds in the first place, what the hell are you towing? I mean, some people might say I'm crazy, but yeah, you know, whatever. And it will only hold though 1,800 pounds in the bed. That's just because the more battery, more weight and physics on springs and such. Speaking of the bed, it is only 5.5 feet long because you only get the crew cab with the 5.5 long bed. It's how it is. I don't tell you there. The gate is actually kind of nice. It has a ruler on the back along with some people call it the Ford sissy step. I disagree with that uh, because trucks are getting bigger and taller so I think the steps are actually necessary. Even GM and Chevy have their multi-flex gate thing so it's just kind of the sign of times. Trucks are so tight off the ground, who wants to step up a four foot incline? It's tough. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a strong guy, but I couldn't imagine carrying 60 pounds up on that without the step, so I think it's nice. Downside of the gate and the frunk, which I don't like, is electric. I don't like that electric frunk thing. I like the frunk. I like the space it offers, you know, 14 cubic feet, that's just nice. But I don't like that it's electric, because that stuff takes forever. I mean, anyone who had one of those SUVs just knows. It's just, it's just, oh my God, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Just give me a thing, you know, who doesn't like just going kunk, 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 I mean, I just, this motion, I, something about it. I like it. Another nice thing about the Ford F-150 Lightning is it's smart, so it can tell you what range you got. Uh, basically, so if you, have the, the bed being filled up, there's a scale in there and it'll change where your range is depending on how full it is. If you've got a trailer, you just tell the trailer size, how much it weighs, and it'll give you approximate range of what you got left. Now again, you're gonna lose 30 to 40% of your range, so that's what Ford says. That, that kind of sucks, especially when you have 230 miles. You know you could go down to 140 miles. It's kind of sucky, but hey, you know, 130, 140 miles, still, still some range, depending on how far you gotta go. I guess if you're 
going camping it's not so bad but speaking of camping I think there's a little bit of problem with that so if you're gonna have this big four lightning electric truck you're probably gonna take it camping because what else do you need a truck that's gonna tow that much weight for anyways that's a lot of weight it's probably those big ass campers unless you're doing your horses and you're doing your horses you're probably camping too and if you're a business owner well you're taking a lot of stuff you could be needing to go places to set up a trucks in sight or something like that well the problem with that is where are you gonna plug in and you're saying well i'm not using the trailer i'll plug in then well you're probably gonna take the truck wherever you're going for your boating or whatever you're swimming you're gonna take the truck with you so where are you gonna plug it in are you gonna unplug the trailer at night when you need the lights and you need the heat and all that stuff probably not 240 volts too important for that so you're gonna be charging 120 that would take forever. I just don't see logic in that. Now, if you didn't have to plug the trailer in, great logic. Or if you had two campsites, and that's just adding cost, it's just too complicated. That's a lot of power. You need to charge that thing up. Even at five kilowatts, which most camping sites will give you, you're gonna need at least 10 to 15 hours to get that thing fully charged. That's a lot of time being at the campsite just to charge your truck. And that's just too long for me, because I'm always a moving. And on top of all of that, you have to realize the cost as well. People think, oh, it doesn't cost that much to charge. Well, most charge places are somewhere between 10 and 15 cents, and depending on the day, it could be 50 cents a kilowatt to charge. So there's still cost to charge a battery. It all depends on where you're going. Now, Tesla's kept their cost down by making it so that they're, they put money into it and they, they cap it off at a certain level. But all these other chargers haven't done that. They want to make money off the chargers themselves because they have to maintain them and, you know, money. And they have to pay the utility companies and that can change throughout the day. If you want to sit there and charge your car right after work or fast charge to get home, they're going to pay more and that's just how it is. So it could be somewhere between $30 and $50 a charge. Depends on the day. Am I saying that it's not going to cost that much to fill up a truck? Of course it is. If you got a big 20 gallon tank or more, because a lot of the F-150s have a bigger tank than that. They have 25 and I think even the F-250 has a 30 gallon tank. Either way, it's definitely going to cost you money. It's also the weight. Because the standard F-150 is about 4,000 pounds. You get up in the V8 and higher miles, you're looking a little over 5,000 pounds. But with this electric power, it has to have a big ass battery. And a big ass battery weighs a lot of weight. So you're probably looking around 1,500 pounds extra. That's just my guess because 98 kilowatts and 131 kilowatts, probably, you know, close to 2,000. It's going to be heavy. But I highly doubt that the Lightning's going to weigh around 5,000 pounds. I think you're closer to 6,000. Upside, if you're a fleet owner, uh, tax break. Downside, uh, if you're trying to stop the vehicle, uh, good luck. And on top of that, braking time, you also have to realize that you have a big, gigantic battery underneath you, which is basically a small bomb. So you take a car like this. It weighs about 2,600 pounds, and it's fun to drive, it's lightweight, and if it was an electric car, you're probably in the 3,000, 3,300 pound range, so not a heavy car. So efficient, fun, not dangerous, can break in a good amount of time. Instead of having a huge battery pack, you have a nice small one. Still technically a bomb, but a smaller bomb. If you take a larger car like this Prius, right now it weighs about 3,300 pounds. Already has a small battery pack in it. Take the engine out, probably looking at 35 or 3,600 pounds, a lot like a Tesla Model 3. And the Hyundai Ioniq, which is about this size, a little bit of bigger boot, uh, it has about a 40 kilowatt hour battery, so not huge but big enough. It gets 4.4 miles per kilowatt. One of the most efficient cars, electric cars on the road at least, and uh, works real well. Now, I know you're also probably saying both these cars are really beat up. That one's technically broken down. That one's missing things. Technically legal though. Uh, and that's another good point I have. Cars get in accidents. They crash. They hit things. And when you have a small or big battery in there, well, today, right now, because of our technology, lithium ion batteries are uh, bombs, you know. So with the Ford Lightning, you'll have basically a 1,500 to 2,000 pound bomb strapped to the bottom of your butt right on your ass just sitting there ready to go kaboom if you hit anything prices of the truck are going to be pretty decent around forty thousand dollars it's a base price it's pretty good you know and then you're going to go up into the ninety thousand for all the bigger batteries and all the cool toys and all that stuff and that's just how things go you know whenever you have these set of things the prices go up as you get fancier shit because you're fancy i think it's a good price i mean it's not a bad price for a truck forty thousand dollars trucks these days are really expensive do I think it's a truck that everyone needs? No, but here's the problem with it. And this is truly what I think about all new electric vehicles. 
Now obviously we can't just keep spewing out CO2 into the air and carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide. We can't keep getting all those emissions off because it's not good for the environment and the breathing and such. It's bad. So, what's the solution? Well, electric's one of the solution. But you have to get lithium, ion, and cobalt. And the problem with cobalt and lithium is it's a nasty business. So cobalt, which is mainly gotten in Africa, you know, uh, has a lot of uh, side effects like cancer, birth defects, sterilizations, other fantastic diseases from cobalt can come to you. Let's talk about lithium. How about what lithium does to the groundwater? It can put arsenic in it. It can also make food unedible. It can also completely destroy your topsoil. Yay, lithium. As well as it comes with other side effects like cancer and, you know, brain defects and such like that. So, not exactly the uh, nicest thing to uh, mine, I'd say. And we only have nine lithium mines in the world. And on top of that, cobalt is sometimes used child labor to get it. Well, you know, let's just not talk about that. So, what is really the environmental impact you have to consider when you have all of this going on? Well, places like Australia and some Chinese places are doing it ethically, but at the same time, they're the big companies doing it. So China make, uh, mines it, sends it over to Japan, which turns into a battery, then brings it over here. And how long is that battery going to last? We have to redo it all over again. And we haven't quite figured out how to recycle all this lithium and ion. That's fantastic, I'd say. Yippee! I'm not saying electric power isn't needed. I'm just saying if we have all these big, heavy vehicles need all this lithium and all this cobalt, it's just going to make another environmental prop. We really need to get that out too, as I've been saying for years. Small electric sports cars, preferably manuals, because I like manuals. They're cool. With small batteries. Small batteries make more sense. And the problem is Joe Schmo is going to buy this Ford Lightning and Joe Schmo doesn't need a Ford Lightning. But construction workers and people who had to carry big things do need a Ford Lightning. And for that reason, yes, it makes sense. But for right now, we need to focus on small little hatchbacks and sports cars. We're not going to do that though because society is moving to bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger vehicles. And that's a problem. I don't like it. It's not cool. It is how it is. So what you going to do, you know? My name is Shane. This has been Throw Thursdays and keep shifting you. Yeah. 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 How are you gonna plug your camper in? Look off. I know she wants to go camping. I said the words. It's very important. What I'm saying is Handsome. God damn it. This is going to work. I love you. Can you want to give me a kiss? Yeah, I was gonna keep recording, it's only a one video.